गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबडी वेलकम टू क्यूरियस माइंड्स आज का जो हमारा टॉपिक है वो है सोशियोलॉजी क्लास ट्वेल्थ का चैप्टर सिक्स द चैलेंजेस ऑफ कल्चरल डाइवर्सिटी एंड बिफोर वी स्टार्ट टू पॉइंट्स फर्स्ट वी अपोलोजाइज फॉर नॉट अपलोडिंग दिस वीडियो अर्लियर आई नो दिस इज़ अ वेरी रिकमेंडेड वीडियो ठीक है बट नाउ दैट वी स्टार्ट इड वी आर गोइंग टू एंड दिस चैप्टर विद इन अ वीक और सो सो प्लीज follow the chapter and make notes along with the chapter only don't use short forms if i have and uh, please continue supporting us and uh, thanks a lot for subscribe subscribing the channel so without any further ado let's start with it now very first thing what we will understand is diversity now diversity emphasizes differences rather than inequalities India is a nation of great cultural diversity. We all know that because there are different social groups and communities living here. Okay, now such communities they are marked by cultural markers. Now cultural markers are those markers by which we can differentiate each other. For example, we can differentiate on the basis of language, religion, sect, race, caste, etc. Now these diverse communities are also part of a nation. Despite of this diversity, we all belong to one nation. right so cultural diversity presents tough challenges which may be due to competition or conflict between the communities okay this diversity only causes uh, you know it presents certain challenges now cultural identities are powerful and they can arouse intense passions they can mobilize people too so while understanding it uh, for example uh, we all see communal rights sometimes we also see caste wars okay so these uh, identities they intend to arouse intense passions like people can fight passionately for them okay so sometimes cultural differences are also accompanied by economic and social inequality for example uh, sometimes you know what happens is um, uh, for example there uh, like there is a sect you know which is at a disadvantage from other sects that can be based on language or religion also or caste also sometimes they also face economic uh, inequality for example they might not be economically sound or they might not have equal opportunity to education etc so sometimes what happens is these cultural differences are also accompanied with economic and social inequality now this is what comp- this is what you know this is where it complicates things now matters are made worse due to scarce resources now now we all know that resources are limited for example river waters are limited land is limited jobs are limited government funds are limited so all these things have to be shared so in order to share all these what happens is this creates competition and conflict also sometimes between the communities so these are the challenges okay so moving on we will understand for example uh, like india's unity and integrity faces challenges such as i already told you communal rights we've seen we've seen demands for region regional autonomy also and uh, we've also seen caste wars now these problems are not new ones we all know and uh, but one thing we should uh, mention here is that india has survived as a nation that despite of such diversity we have um, survived theek hai and uh, we are at a good place today you have to realize despite of diversity because it is very difficult for a diverse nation to develop and you know uh, to be progressive so next topic which we will understand is cultural community and the nation state first concept what we will understand here is socialization now socialization is a continuous dialogue negotiation even struggle against significant others and it also anchors our self identity r is o u r okay please correct it don't use this word so socialization we all know uh, like as you grow up you are socialized uh, by your environment theek okay? hai for example uh, there are many uh, ways through which you can be socialized very first is uh, family and then you get socialized by school you get socialized by society you get socialized by media okay all these you know they help in socialization process next what we will understand is community identity now one thing you need to understand is community identity is based on birth okay and belonging rather than some acquired accomplishment for example you clear an exam 
ओके सो यू फॉर एग्जाम्पल बोर्ड्स एग्जाम ओके ट्वेल्थ यू विल क्लियर एंड यू विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज इफ यू नो यू अकम्पलिश्ड Uh, you've accomplished clearing the exam, but then community is like you are born into it. Nobody can change it. Okay, it is not your choice. For example, if you want to clear further, if you want to clear IIT or NEET exam, or you want to clear UGC NET, etc., those are your accomplishments. But community identity is not your accomplishment. It is, it is not an acquired accomplishment. Okay, so it is based on your birth. You had no choice, but. then also uh, despite of that you feel a sense of belonging so it is what we are rather than what we become you don't become a particular community for example uh, you live in a particular state okay for example let's take jammu and kashmir for example or let's take punjab for example so it's the culture may vary it it is not that you acquired a culture no you were born into that culture so you will have different you might belong to different religions you might belong to different regions different castes so you will have certain identities based on that such identities are known as ascriptive identities okay ascriptive identities further we will understand what ascriptive identities are there are two major points very first is uh, please mark it along and uh, while you write the points okay first write these two points only because these are the major ones first is they are determined by accidents of birth and they do not involve any choice on the part of the individual that is you did not have any choice uh, while you know while you were born like if you are a punjabi you did not have a choice right you were born there okay if you are uh if you belong to a particular religion you did not have a choice to be born into that religion okay so you were just born so ascriptive identity is one of those this is the very first point which is important second point which is important is it is to be understood that ascriptive identities you know they are universal like everybody has them it is not that only you have it okay and everybody has them generally speaking now people feel a deep sense of security and belonging to a community in which their membership is entirely accidental see this is very uh, you know uh, this is a very opposing sentence here like you feel a sense of security and you belong to one language and you belong to one culture despite of the fact that you were born into it it is not by your choice that you got that okay so it is purely accidental but the kind of belonging you feel okay that results in uh, intensified passions for your uh, maybe for any of the cultural markers can be language can be caste can be religion now such identities are very hard to shake off and we tend to get emotionally attached now this is very common okay so what happens is i already told that it is understood that ascriptive identities are universal also so everyone has a motherland they have a mother tongue they have a faith like generally speaking they do have it and we all are committed and loyal to it like you might be committed to your motherland to your mother tongue to your faith okay and somebody else might be the same they might feel the same for their own motherland mother tongue or faith right so it is the expanding and overlapping circles of community ties basically for example family caste language you know this is what this overlapping of community only gives us meaning it gives meaning to our life it gives us a sense of identity as to who we are okay so we might belong to different families different castes different language no two persons are equal like no two persons have the same identity mostly okay so you might recognize yourself uh, in various ways you might belong to a particular family a particular caste language religion you might belong to a different place altogether okay so every country or group mobilizes its members to struggle for truth justice and equality like in your book also you know this point is explained very well wherein see every country who fights for the nation like every uh, you know every population that fights for a nation will fight for truth they will fight for justice and they will fight for equality nobody believes that they are going to uh, fight for injustice 
okay so you have to realize that there are uh, for example you know we say that uh, these are the two coins of the uh, two coins of the uh, sorry two sides of the same coin we generally say this right so what happens is uh, every country you know they try to mobilize people now it can be a country also sometimes what happens is uh, during a communal riot or caste wars the, when there is this particular group okay it tries to mobilize people it will mobilize people for justice only justice for their own maybe caste maybe religion okay so these are descriptive identities uh, for part 1 of the chapter this is it we will continue uh, second part of the 6.1 okay in our next video and that will be uploaded day after tomorrow so before you go if you have any recommendations do write it in the comment section and we will surely uh, keep you updated regarding that and uh, until then please study hard stay home and uh, thank you for supporting us